there's different levels of confidence. And so what I would tell my 20 year old self is to just let go of fear of judgment and fear of what people are saying. Cause I've really learned and it took me 40 years guys, but I really learned that people just don't care as much as you think they care. And I wasted so much time. I feel just caring too much about that. Hello and welcome to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. We're here to help you navigate life while disrupting the status quo. Our discussions cover a number of topics relevant to everyday life. We discuss everything from relationships to entrepreneurship. We also engage in some difficult but important conversations. And now, here are your hosts, Brian and Tanya Hamilton. Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. Today we're joined by Nicole Bernard at Steps Forward. We're going to be discussing passion and purpose and then later talking to Nicole about some of her failures and how she's turned those into successes. Nicole, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So today we are going to be chatting about passion versus purpose. And uh, before we get into that, I, we always ask people, who is Nicole Bernard? <laughs> Uh, wow, such a intense question to begin with. It's always hard for me to um, talk about myself. So uh, yes, I am uh, Nicole Bernard is a mom, first and foremost, that's my first title, mom to two amazing little girls, nine and 11. And I consider that to be just the greatest gift and joy of my life. So I always talk about my two gifts first. And secondly, I am a, an event planner slash manager slash experience enthusiast. So anything that brings together people, whether through social settings, corporate settings, um, most of my adult career has been dedicated to creating experiences live and now virtual for people and coming together. And then thirdly, I am a people leader. I'm very passionate about leadership and have spent the last 10 years or so really focusing on what it means to be a really great leader, both in my own experiences and just gleaning wisdom from a lot of the leaders that I've had along my career path as well. So I think those would be the top three th things I would use to describe me. Perfect. And you left one out. You're my best friend. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. But you no, know, you are my best friend. And we've yeah. known each other since we were little girls. And it's been awesome to just like see you move throughout your career and the different avenues you've been in and uh, where you are now. So thanks so much for joining us. We're going to get into our conversation I'm actually going to start with reading off a description that I found online. So let me start with that and then we'll go from there. Passion and purpose are distinct. Passion is about emotions, the motivation, and what makes us feel good. Example, do what you love. Purpose is the reason or the why behind what we do, primarily for others. Example, do what contribute. Where, per sorry, where passion can be all over the place, wild and exciting, purpose is much more focused. Passions can also come and go, whereas purpose tends to be longer term. Finally, passions are inwardly focused, whereas purpose is outwardly focused on the greater impact you have on others and on your surroundings. So that was sort of loaded. But Nick, what are your thoughts on this statement? Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot to impact there, actually. So I'll, I'll start off by saying this, I'm actually very passionate about purpose. <laughs> <because> okay, okay. <laughs> funny as that sounds, a little bit of my journey is that I have felt that for most of my life, so I just turned 40, as you know, back in January, and I have felt like for most of my adult life, soon after high school, actually, I've been on this journey to find what I call is my purpose. And for me, it's been quite the journey. It's a bit frustrating because I felt like I was on this lifelong search for something that I could just never find. And that was super frustrating for me, especially when I became a mother and I thought, oh, this is it. My purpose is to be a mother and realize that wasn't it. <laughs> um, and so that was frustrating for me as well. And so I think what I would agree with with those, the definition is that, yes, purpose, I believe, is sort of the core of why we feel that we're here, like why, why God put us on this earth? What is it that we're called or, or put on this earth to do? I feel like that is what purpose is. The definition of passion, I, I do believe that passions can be fleeting. 
can come and go, but I also think passion is something that drives purpose. I think that your passions evolve into various forms, but at the end of the day, what I've learned anyways, speaking from my own personal experience, is that the passions that you discover along the way of life and through your journey, if you really piece it together, it all, it all equals this, I don't know, almost like this formula of what it means to discover your purpose or to live a life of purpose. So I agree with most of that. I, I do gr- agree with passion being more about the reason why you do things, but I think passion, sorry, purpose being the reason why you do things, but I think passion is what leads you there. Okay. And so for you, when do you feel you started working in your purpose slash passion? And why do you think it took you until then? So not that I was always working in my purpose. I think right now, to be honest, I would really just say I re- it has taken me 40 years <laughs> to figure out what my purpose is. And like I said, I felt like it's been this lifelong journey, but I feel like I finally landed on what my purpose is really in the last year to six months or so. And the reason why I took so long, I would say that was part of your question, was I feel like I overcomplicated it. For example, I remember having moments in life where I would say, for example, motherhood. I say, okay, motherhood, this must be my purpose. My purpose is to be a mother to these kids, but it just felt like it wasn't good enough. And I don't mean that to sound negative or uh, it's not a knock to, you know, the mothers out there. I just felt like it just wasn't it. And I think with purpose, you know, when you've landed on it, you know, when you're like, oh, this is my reason for being, this is why all of my experiences, everything I've been through, all my lessons have led to this. And for me, becoming a mother wasn't it. It might be for some people, but that wasn't my purple, my, um, my personal experience. So I think along the way, I just really made it complicated. I felt like everything that I felt passionate about wasn't good enough for some reason, but I discovered when I turned 40 that it really wasn't about it not being good enough. It was about me not being able to put the pieces together until I uh, turned 40. I think that was my moment. So do you feel that you took like, I guess a little bit from every experience, maybe along the way, whether it be professional experiences and um you know just every day and then sort of came to the conclusion this is what I'm supposed to be doing yeah definitely I think until I had had that aha moment or whatever we want to call it I think that was the moment where I look back over the course of my life and did see how the pieces connected I think that the reason why I I was a little on the fence about your definition uh, of passion is that I know for a fact that I always have been passionate about people. I know that ever since high school, actually, when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to go to, what I wanted to take in college, I knew that whatever it was, I wanted to be connected to people and I wanted to feel like I was helping people. I've always been able to identify myself as someone who has been always passionate about people. However, I didn't realize that discovering my purpose, although connected to people, uh, the journey has allowed me to get more specific about that. So what is, it, what is it about my connection, my passion for people that led me to my purpose? And I think that's what the journey was about. All right. Now, Nicole, one thing I was, I was wondering there while you were just kind of articulating how you found your passion and, you know, why it took you until now. If you were to, if you would have defined your passion, say, five or 10 years ago, do you think you would have come to a different conclusion than you've come to, you know, just from the experience you've had in that time? I don't think so, because I can see now how my various passions have come down to one thing, which was, which is sharing my experience. So just let me, first of all, define what I believe my purpose is and where I've landed after 40 years. <laughs> so <laughs> right now, if you were to ask me what I feel like my purpose is, I can very confidently tell you that My purpose is to share the experiences that I've had over the course of my life for the purpose of helping and encouraging and supporting people or others. I couldn't have told you that 10 years ago, for example, to answer your question, I would have said, oh, my, my purpose is people or my, but that's because I was defining what I was passionate about and labeling it as my purpose because I just quite honestly didn't know. So I think if you were to ask me 10 years ago that I, you know, that I would agree or, or would have identified the true purpose of what I discovered now, I don't think I, I would definitely be able to tell you what I was passionate about, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you my purpose. Now, th- now that being said, what are some of the experiences that you feel that you've had that would be, r- that are most beneficial to share with people? 
Yeah, quite honestly, um, the difficult ones, the ones that I never wanted people to know about, <laughs> the ones that I, you know, quite honestly felt ashamed of or embarrassed for the longest time. I thought a lot of the hardships that I went through were isolated to me. And the more that I opened up to people, the more that I realized there was a whole lot of people going through very similar things. That was part of my aha moment over the course of the years too, is just discovering that I wasn't alone in some of the things that I was afraid to share or afraid of what people would say. Um, yeah, I just, okay. So I think the hard experiences, some of the trauma, some of the loss, some of the most, what I would describe as the most uh, difficult times of my life are really what I've learned is going to make the impact that I would like to see in in working my purpose and um, and finally having this thing that I've been searching on searching for my whole life, which is like why am I here? And now I realize why. And actually looking back at it, I wouldn't again be able to say this ten years ago, but I'm definitely thankful for all the hardships and all the difficult things I went through, because I think that helped me to have purpose. And those things helped me to be able to live that, to live in that and to be able to operate in my purpose. And I think 10 years ago or 20 years ago, or when I was on this search, the reason why I couldn't land on what my purpose was, was because I hadn't had the experiences yet that shaped it. And so I think part of my purpose is to really share the good, but also the bad and the rough. And I think that's what I, I feel is going to have the most impact. So, you know, I look at ladies who I run into and I talk to, and I always say on here, like, I can only speak for some of the other ladies out there, but you know, a lot of people sometimes feel stuck in their careers, right? Like they're feeling, this is not my purpose per se, but not really at a stage in life where I can, you know, go back to school or, you know, switch jobs, what have you, right? Got to pay the bills. What do you suggest people do to feel, to almost fill that void in their life where they're working, but they don't feel the purpose? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think for the longest time, actually, because I've always really loved what I do and my job, my day to day, I also actually thought at one point that would have been, was my purpose. And again, just realized it just didn't give me that feeling of completeness that I thought I loved it. I, it made me happy, but it just didn't give me that feeling. And so I think I've been talking a lot about this actually on my blog and different people have been reaching out to me just to say, I had one person reach out to say, can you help me find what my purpose is? And that's such a difficult question because it comes down to your personal journey. And I would say if your purpose is also is related to what you're passionate about, but it's also related to what makes you happy. And if your job or whatever you're doing doesn't make you happy and not just like, yeah, you know, I can do this on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. But really bring you joy where you wake up in the morning, you can be committed to it. You can be and really enjoy what you do. Time isn't a factor. You have energy towards it. Find what those things are. And this is what I encourage this individual to do is like, what are the things that just bring you the ultimate joy? And what is it that you do that sort of just makes time stand still and can get lost in the moment and you just feel deep level of satisfaction and knowing why you're here? I think that's a lot. If you could ask yourself the question, why am I here? And the answer is not your job or not your family or whatever your commitments are. If you can just answer that question, why do you feel that I'm here? I think that that is another good question to ask yourself to help you on your, on your journey. Yeah. And I think too, you know, I'm still in my thirties, but I think that as you go through different seasons in life, that can change, right? Like what I would say my purpose was in my twenties and what I was very passionate about, I can sit here and say, that's no longer it for me. Right. And who knows what the like year old Tanya is going to look like and what I'm going to be really passionate about then. So I think also keeping that in mind as well yeah. for people too. Yeah, I think it's part of growth, right? Like it's natural to kind of, you know, things as things ebb and flow that you move towards different things, you find different things, you find your passions in different things. I think it's only natural. And I, I think that's a stumbling block for some people as they get so caught up in one thing and make it their identity mm -hmm. that it's hard to, you know, to kind of turn from that as, as time as time goes on, if that makes sense. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that I think what's what I found to be the really distinctive factor is that it's okay that your passions evolve. It's okay that what what you do and how you do it changes. Like we're we're all changing. Like I'm not who I was when I was 20 or even 30. And that's okay. Uh passions evolve, passions change, what we enjoy to do, those things change and evolve. I think that the real secret, and again, I'm not a purpose expert or anything, I'm just speaking from my personal experience. <laughs> experience. But the secret for me is when I look at all the things that I have been passionate about, passionate about over the years, it all comes back to this core reason. What is the reason that I did those things? Or what what do all those things have in common at the core of it all? No matter what I was doing, it all had this connection to people and sharing experiences. Even my my role right now, I would like if you ask anyone on my, I mean it's my teams or people that I work with, they would tell you that I am such an advocate and so passionate about experience. And when you look at the core of what my purpose is, my purpose is to share my experiences. That may have looked differently and different in what I did for a living. I created, I create experiences for people at events and different functions, but it's still an experience. And I, that's just an example of how you put the pieces together in terms of the sum of all of that you're passionate about, about all that you do. What is the core thing? And I think that's where you found your purpose. So can I ask you, let's talk about success. Cause I think sometimes people will say, well, maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing because it's not successful. Right. So how do you define success? Yeah. I would throw that back at at you or the person searching for it how do you define success how does it says money is it fame or notoriety or status I think only only you as an individual can define what success looks like and I but I would say that there is always this competition between what you would personally define success as and what society would just define it as. So everything we see, we look at on social media, we watch, we hear sort of leads us to believe that success comes down to money, let's say, for example. And if you feel that, yeah, I mean, I'd feel successful if I had money, but you wouldn't necessarily be happy with that. I think that you should just rebel against whatever society is saying and define success for yourself. For me, I found success, again, an example of how this ties into my purpose um, and sharing my experiences is that for me, I really define success if someone on one of my teams or somebody comes up to me and says, you know, I've really learned something from you. That to me, that's the ultimate success. You couldn't pay me enough dollars. <laughs> that would that would show that would equal in value for me to know that I've had the opportunity to have an impact or teach somebody something or be an example of something. To me personally, that's more that's worth more than money to me. So I think success is whatever you define it as. Okay. Now I'm going to give a little shout out to your blog and we'll talk more about it later, but um, you have a post and it's called failing to succeed. And you talk about the fact that failure is actually a gift in situations. And my little plug here is I love Nick's uh, blog post because they are short, but like the, you jam so much into each post and I can read it without being interrupted. And I really appreciate that. And I know others will too. So that's my little plug on my best theme. So talking about the fact that failure is a gift. Can you share with us what you were thinking of when you wrote that part? Yes, absolutely. And thanks for my blog shout out. Actually, <laughs> I write them short on purpose because I'm very connected to who my audience is, which I believe is people like me, busy, busy moms who don't have time to read, but need to obtain a lot of information in a short amount of period of time. So I definitely write that. And if I'm writing it and I'm like, and I myself don't want to read any more than I know it's too long. <laughs> um, so I'm all a fan of short and sweet. So Again, looking back at some of my experiences, which I mean, I've had my own business, I've worked for various organizations of all sizes, I have a 20 plus career working for various organizations, and I would say have had the pleasure of failing hugely in some cases. And, you know, looking back at my 20 year old self, I mean, I cried over some of those things, quite honestly, and was super stressed about some of those failures. But looking back at it now, I've used those same examples to help build and encourage my teams now, or to be able to speak of a place of experience again. And I'll probably say those words <laughs> at least 50 times on this 
uh, in this interview, but those were the greatest examples I have of how you fail, but most importantly, how you recover and how you get back up again and keep going. And I think that is, that demonstrates the greatest strength and success. And if you didn't have those opportunities to fail, how would you ever learn how to grow? How would you ever learn or even feel that you need to grow or improve or um, evolve? So, you know, I, I actually think if you're walking through life without a challenge, without a failure, I actually think that you're at a disadvantage because there's so much learning that comes from failure that is just priceless. One thing, Nicole, that you, you know, where we kind of can relate is losing our fathers. And, you know, you lost your father much earlier than I did. And you've written this blog where you're talking about some of the lessons that you learned from your your father. Would you mind uh, sharing some of that with us? Yeah, sure. Just to sort of provide some context. So I know that most daddy's girls might say this, but I really feel like my dad was my hero. Like he just was everything to me. I was his only daughter. I've come from a family of a five. So four boys and myself. And I don't know how to describe him other than to say he just, he was not a man of many words, but he was a man of many examples. And I think that anyone who ever came into contact with him walked away from that occurrence, that conversation, whatever it was, just impacted in some way by him, which I always thought was amazing because he just didn't say much. It was more about how he lived his life. And so that's what I write about on the blog a little bit is what were the things that I learned from him just by him being him and and kind of living his life and being this example of so many life lessons. And to lose that was probably the the hardest thing. I mean, I've been through a lot of hard things, but probably the hardest thing to lose him. He he passed away from cancer at a very young age. He was only 54, I believe, um, when he passed away. And it was uh, a very short journey that he had gone on. So we didn't have a lot of time from when we found out he was not going to have very much time. So again, during that whole process, even as when he was sick, just even on his deathbed, the words that he spoke, or even just the looks that he gave, or just so just trying to glean so much knowledge um, from him in those moments as well. So yeah, I try to share a little bit about that on the blog. But I just, again, thankful for that experience. And I know that kind of sounds crazy to say, but I think it was his what he lived his life for. And I feel like me sharing it now is just an extension of that. And so proud to be able to speak about it openly and share what I believe he taught me for the very purpose of, of sharing it with other people. So he's kind of the inspiration about behind most of what I do. I'm just thinking, you know, we're both moms here and, you know, I find that so many people in society feel that they take a long time to figure out what, you know, they should be doing. Is there any suggestions you have that we could, you know, conversations even that we could have with their kids or what we could look for to almost help direct them into what we see their, their purpose potentially could be? Yeah, I think I want to say two things just about being a mom. Um, I think that for the longest time, I struggled back and forth between loving being a mom, but not feeling like that was my purpose. And I was, I struggled with that because it, it, it created this like sense of guilt. Like, of course, this is my purpose. I have children and I need to raise them to be you know, functioning human beings. <laughs> How could that not be my purpose? So I think that I just want to say one little note of encouragement to moms. It's okay to be a mom and not feel like that is your only purpose in life. And I just want to release moms of all that guilt that they could potentially feeling. I know I did for many, many years. Um, It's okay. They could be in two completely swim lanes and it's okay. And so I just wanted to put that in there because I know that there's a lot of moms out there that um, really struggle with that. And then second, to help your kids find their purpose. I think for me, I have always kind of known for both my girls, actually, what I feel that their purpose will be. But I never really communicated that to them because I don't want to 
have them miss out on the journey of figuring that out for themselves. I think if I hand it to them, they're going to miss out on all that life experience, all that mental and emotional maturity that comes with covering what your purpose is. And I would just, I feel like I'd be doing them a disservice if I just said, hey, I really feel like this is what your purpose is. I really want them to find it for themselves, to have the opportunity to fail, like I mentioned, and to have the opportunity to come back from that. I think what I what I do and will continue to do is to just guide them with their emotions and how they process things and encouraging them and just pointing out anything that I feel like is a gift, pointing that out to them and saying, Hey, you know, you're really good at this, but I don't, I want to be really careful to say, Hey, you should be a teacher when you grow up because you're really good at this. I want them to have that, that discovery themselves, be able to hear what they're good at and, and start to learn and feel what they're good at and to be able to make those connections for themselves. So I would just, I know speaking for myself, I'm, I'm definitely not a parenting expert. What I do pride myself on is just emotionally supporting my kids through the various stages of life, through self-discovery and just, yeah, just kind of watching and being there to answer their questions, catch them when they fall. But I definitely don't want to, to let them miss out on, on basically the journey of life. It's hard as moms because we just want to protect them and put pillows all around them. You know how you do like when they're learning to walk and you literally put a pillow <laughs> behind their feet as they step and that's that's just in our nature but I think I just want to re- have this like constant reminder in my mind that they do need to fall and they need to figure some things out for themselves and I think that's what will help them ultimately get to where they, they need to be. No I definitely like that and can appreciate that feedback and I think it's important to keep all that in mind right we want to always say when you said you know oh you would be good at being a teacher or something like that mm-hmm. it, it, because you see it you see how they act and like what they're strong in and you, you almost have to bite your tongue, I guess you could say. Right. And just sort of help them feed it. So you, if you see it, that they're into something, okay, Hey, you want to go and try out these lessons or do you want to go and do this? Or, you know what? You're a really good friend. You're really encouraging. You're really kind with your words and that kind of stuff and reminding them. But yeah, definitely. I, it's so true what you said, just letting them yeah. figure all that out. So I like that answer. The other thing too, I want to add to that. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on young people to figure out what they want to do. And it's, it's tough to do that really early in life. I think, you know, for now, like you found your passion at 40, you know, given life expectancy, you haven't even lived half of your life yet, but at 20, you probably thought you had it all figured out or at least had kind of it mapped out in your head. And I, I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with now. So I, I want to ask you just based on what you've experienced, knowing how, you know, how much time there, how much time is left, what you've learned up till this point. If you could have a cup of coffee with 20-year-old Nicole, what would you have to tell her about life? Wow, I love this question. Man, so many things. It would be more like a lunch, I think. A cup of coffee might not do it. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a bottomless coffee, so. Yeah, okay, great, 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 great. We have time. Um, okay, so many things. I think first and foremost, I would tell her to not be afraid, to be confident, I really struggled for my first 40 years of life with confidence. And, you know, it's funny because I would hide behind things like, because I'm a leader, I've been a people leader for, for many, many years, and you would never think that I ever had confidence issues. But I think that there is a, there's different levels of confidence. And so what I would tell my 20 year old self is to just let go of fear of judgment and fear of what people are saying because I've really learned and it took me 40 years guys but I really learned that people just don't care as much as you think they care and I wasted so much time Um, I feel just caring too much about that and letting that keep me from a lot of things so yeah confidence is key that's what I would tell myself Second to that, I would say to myself is to use your voice. I feel like I've always had a lot to say and I don't know why I didn't speak up. I just, yeah, I can't, I can't tell you why, but I, it was probably fear. It was probably confidence. It was probably a lot of things, but I would say to her, definitely use your voice. If you have something to say, just say it and be unafraid. What else would I say? I would say definitely to spend more time doing what makes you happy. I think I spent a lot of time doing, make, trying to make other people happy and making sure everybody's happy. And I think part of that comes down to my, my career in service and like 
helping people, making people, you know, making sure they're having a good time. I, I, you guys probably could attest to this. Like when I have get togethers at my house, I don't sit down. I clean the whole time. I don't enjoy the time with guests and things like that. So yeah, I would, I would tell my 20 year old self to do more of what makes you happy, you. And then, yeah, also I would tell myself to spend more time getting to know myself getting to know who you are. And a lot of that has come through just solitude and more time to focus on who I was. I mean, I couldn't even answer. If somebody asked me what I like to do a year ago, I honestly couldn't even tell you. I would say work <laughs> or something. Like I had no idea what my interests were. I never focused on those things. I just kind of knew what I liked, but I didn't make it like a purposeful like discovery process so those are just a few I could probably go on for a long time but yeah it's more of just a lot of things that are individual I always thought were selfish I thought putting so much time on my and focus on myself was selfish and I realize now that it really wasn't selfish and actually what I was doing keeping everything in and not helping and not using my voice and not discovering who I was for the better uh, uh, for, of someone else was un, in fact actually selfish I think I wrote about this in my last blog actually I had this aha moment where where I realized that not using my voice not sharing that was actually selfish so yeah it would be a very long coffee <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good that's great thanks so much nick well we have enjoyed having you here and chatting with us in a professional format not uh as besties <laughs> having coffee or a glass of wine <laughs> <laughs> this is probably Next the most time. this is probably the most uninterrupted conversation we've had and like since we became moms yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no we thank you so much and we just wanted to ask obviously you talked about your blog so what do you have on the go right now in 2021 yeah definitely right now outside of work in my day-to-day focus is really just this blog that I started called step forward and I really, I, I just one day woke when, you know, when I realized, okay, I really got to talk about what I've been through in life and share my experiences. Once I discovered what my purpose was going back to passions, one passion that I had over the years was writing. That was something that I've kind of hidden away. I think Tanya, for the 30 years that you've known me, you probably didn't even know that I, ri- that I wrote. <laughs> it's funny. I was actually just thinking that because I remember when you said, you know, you were going to start a blog. I was like, oh, okay, neat. I didn't even know that was something you were into before, but it just flows so naturally like you read and it's like wow you're it just flows it's great yeah no I had always written in my journal and I had attempted to I started writing a book actually on one of my mat leads I can't remember which one which kid it was but I started writing a book and just I don't know for fun and then piecing things together and then most recently discovered okay how am I going to use my voice how am I going to kind of just put myself out there and you know I'm not I'm not great at face-to-face quite yet so I thought okay why don't I use what I think is my gift of writing to to share some of that so I came up with steps forward I the concept really um came from a Martin Luther King Jr. quote where he's mentioning and I don't have it word for word but it's something like you know whatever you do you can walk you can run you can leap but just keep moving forward And I think that has been one of the best things that I've been able to do. And I'm really proud of actually over the course of my life is that, you know, I've had a lot of hard things, a lot of good things, but one thing I've managed to do is just to keep taking steps forward. And I've never been one to kind of just sit down and, you know, feel sorry for myself or, you know, I have my moments, don't get me wrong, but I've always been really Uh, able to just pick myself up and move forward no matter what and that was one thing that I learned from my dad so between the quote and you know lessons from my dad kind of how I came up with the concept of the blog and really I just want to write about my life my day-to-day experiences I think that's what people need right now people just need relatable I know I do so I really just write in the context of what it is I would myself would want to read and kind of just share my experiences I have so many thoughts and ideas swimming around in my head on notepads and journals all various places so I just really wanted to get it down and kind of out there and hopes that someone even if one person something or it resonated with one person then it would be worth me so that's why I started it there you go well it's definitely been worth it to me and to many others so thanks for sharing and thanks for taking that big stuff but anyways it's been a great chat so until next time thank you guys
Thanks for listening to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. For more ways to listen, connect with us on social media. To be a guest or to partner with us, check out our link tree at Disrupt the Everyday. Join us next time for more ways to disrupt the everyday.